called Choke and Spread. You see it? OK. Uh, OK. So inherently, what happens is this. Because of all that averaging, um, all the software that we use to develop digital files, that looks for edges, and it drops more contrast on those edges. So what's happening here, the reason we're actually seeing this edge here is that my, uh, um, my typical routine that I use to actually generate this mask is the same thing. It's using that select, uh, zero selective color action. And it works fine. The problem is, is that the general green area that's in the background, it's selecting all of that. But because digital files make this edge right along here more contrasty this is actually a significantly darker green and it falls out of the range of what I was trying to capture even if I'm doing levels on it it falls out of that range and it's not a problem I mean we run into it all the time so you're just gonna see it on every file but there is a fix for this a quick fix for this that again in the refine remember I told you the guy this guy's before when we were looking at the refine mask either Find your um, so anyway, that's what we're going to do on this guy. To do this, though, I need everybody to do me a favor and open up a brand new file, just a regular synthetic file. So Command N or up to the file menu, down to New. Uh, I'm just going to do a, a, let's say just say an eight by ten uh, at 300 ppi and go ahead and say OK to that. It'll open up a brand new image. Uh, I'm going to double click on the hand again to get it to fill up my screen as big as it can. I'm going to hit the M key to get the marquee tool and I'm simply going to click and drag out a square just like we've, we've done this a thousand times before. You need to make sure that the feathering up here in your options palette is set to zero and then you also need to make sure that your rulers are showing because I want to put guides around this guy. To make sure that your rulers are showing, if they're not, come up to the view menu and come down to rulers and your rulers will show. Once they do show, if you click on the ruler and drag you can pull out a guideline and it should snap to one of the active edges of your selection and I need you to then pull another one out from the very same place we simply need to completely outline this guy so that we know where the image part of this really was so that's what I'm doing right now so is this working for everybody all right so with it done like that I want you to add a new blank layer on top of this and I want you to fill this layer with black. So hit, your, hit the D key to default foreground and background colors to their default. And because black is now my foreground color, option delete will actually fill this selection with black and then command D to deselect. And if you zoom in close enough to this guy, you'll actually see that yes, indeedy, it is actually, um, uh, it, this is exactly what we thought uh, 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 would happen on this. So is this working for everybody? Okay, I need to blur this image right now. So uh, again, with that still that same layer number one selected, come up to the filter and come down to um, blur and then come down to Gaussian blur. And let's put a Gaussian blur on there of something significant. So I'm gonna actually put on, cause I really need you to be able to see this. Let's do a blur of like, yeah, I'm gonna do something like an eight or a nine. So somewhere in there, that'll be good enough. And I'm gonna go ahead and say okay to that. And I'm gonna zoom into this guy. So I want you to see what actually happens when you do a blur. Look up at my screen really quickly right here. I'm just gonna go back and forth with Command Z. And you can see what happens with blur is this. You can see that the outside of my edge here is actually um, white and the inside of this is black. And if you look at your info palette, as you run along a line right here, you go from white to black in just in one single pixel. It happens right at the edge of that guideline. But when you do a blur on this, well, the, what a blur is doing is this. It actually looks at where that edge is and it says, okay, you wanna blur that. What we're going to do is we are going to put some lighter grays to the outside and so, I mean, so, some darker grays to the outside because again, this outside was white. We've actually nad and now added grays to this. And then we're also going to do some lighter grays on the inside. Remember, black went all the way up to this line, but it isn't going up to that line anymore. So we've introduced these shades of gray. That's what a blur is. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, and the reason this is important to us is that we can now run levels on this. So we bring up Command L to bring up the Levels dialog box. And in the Levels dialog box, if you grab the black slider, think about what's going to happen. 
Doesn't the black slider take things that are in this middle gray area and make them black? It does. So if you grab that black slider point and you drag it towards the center, look what happens to absolutely nothing happens to your guy right here. So let's try this. I think I really need this on a white layer. I'm going to hit cancel here really quickly. With your blurred image like this, go ahead and just merge it down into your background. Command E will merge it down and then copy that background layer guy and then turn the bottom one off. So I've just put that, that black on a, a, a white field. Does that make sense, everyone? Are we good on this? OK, and then Command L to bring up the Levels dialog box. And you will see here with the Levels dialog box up, if you take your black slider and you start to drag it towards the center, what you're saying you want to do is take those levels of gray that were down here and make them black. If you continue to do this, you will actually push that selection beyond the border where it originally was. This is now leaving this. This is now shoving my edge. Imagine if this is a mask. I've just pushed my edge further out. This is called a spread. Did that work for everyone? Nope. Just see really quick. Get some of this. That part's right. Command L. Select. Make sure you don't have a selection going. Katie, you're you're just in like <laughs> like like absolute you know computer hell today, right? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Let's make this even bigger. It's a little too crazy. Let's take care of that. Sometimes I go back the other way. I have no idea what's going on here, girl. Just watch this. It'll work on the image. It'll work on the image. Okay, does that make sense what's going on here? So what I've done when I blurred it was I introduced tones of gray. And now I'm remapping those tones of gray. So in this case, again, it pushes my edge out. Again, that's called a spread. If you pull that uh, black point all the way back down again and grab the white point instead, you click on it and pull it in. You'll see now that you're actually making this area smaller. This is called a choke. Is everybody good on that part? OK, so if it didn't work on this screen part of it all, hopefully it's going to work on the image part of it all. So I'm going to cancel out of this. I'm going to throw this image away. You don't need to save it. Back to this image. So again, I'm going to work up here on the top. It is on the image itself, but we're working on the mask. Again, I'm going to choke and spread this mask. If you want to see the mask edge by itself, hold down your Option key and simply click on this. And you can actually see what the edge begins to look like. I'm going to take a look at this edge right over here. And if you zoom way into it, you can see there is a little bit of gray in here, but not a heck of a lot. It goes from black to white. There's just a little touch in here, and that is actually not enough to choke and spread. But here is the key to choking and spreading is this right now. And if you don't do this, this is going to blow up in your face. You don't want that to happen. Before we choke and spread, we need to actually create a history state. So I need you to make sure that the top layer is selected, <clears throat> make sure that the little uh, brackets are around the, um, uh, the mask itself, and I want you to come over to your history palette and click on the little camera at the bottom, and you need to call this pre-choke. And say OK. So this way we've got a state that we can get back to that will actually look like this. Now we're going to go ahead and choke it. So make sure that your mask is selected. Come up to hit Command D just to make sure you don't have an active selection going. Um, come, and you, uh, come down to Blur, down to Gaussian Blur. And I'm going to hit this with, um, again, this is an art form. So I'm just going to show you the way I typically want to make things look. You can see that we're actually making the problem worse. We're making the green is now actually spreading out. It's actually we're seeing more of it. That is by design. I'm going to try this. Let me see what three pixels is. Three pixels. 
a little too soft. Let's go back to two pixels. Again, if this does not work on your first try, you simply go back in history and put in another value here. So, but I want to make the problem worse and I'm gonna go ahead and say okay to that. So that's my two pixels. I'm gonna show you what we just did. You don't need to do this, but I'm gonna show you guys what just happened. Um, if I go back in time, this was what the mask looked like, but now that I'm doing this, I'm actually blurring it. So I'm adding degrees of gray between this black and this white now. Does that make sense to everyone? Okay, so, and then looking at this in real time, um, again, with the mask selected, Command L to bring up the Levels dialog box. And now, a lot of times, I don't remember which way to go with this. I grabbed the wrong slider and things go in the wrong direction, but I'm fairly certain it's the black slider point. If it doesn't work, if things get worse, go to the white slider point. But anyway, I'm gonna grab the black slider and I'm gonna simply click and drag it in and you can see I am choking that line away and I have now removed that green and I've removed it over my entire image. Did that work for everyone? So I came in, I've got a black point roughly of around 200. I'm gonna back this off just a little bit um, just to see sort of what happens in here. I don't think I need, yep, I need every bit of that. So I may write in around a 200. If you want to have the very same image as mine, you do the same image as mine. Katie? No? Okay, then this is a restart for, wait a second, what the hell is this? Yeah, I'm thinking this is uh, uh, reset uh, for your preferences. So um, we will just go ahead and quit Photoshop really quick. Everyone should know this command. I'm gonna give it to you really fast. So Katie, this is also gonna reset your workspace. So you're gonna just have to go back in and reset your workspace and all your preferences. Uh, but again, do you wanna do this now or do you wanna do this at the end of the day? Let's do this at the end of the day because otherwise nothing is gonna look the way it is. Okay. Um, so at any rate, if you've gotten through here, go ahead and say okay to this. And if you now actually, I'm gonna zip back out and take a look around my image. And you can actually see that that green line is gone from around my entire image. At this stage of the game, you want to do another history state. So back over to the history palette, click on the little camera icon and come up and call this post choke and say okay. So we've now got two history states that will allow us to paint with what the image looked like in those various stages. And the reason you want this is if we come up and you take a look at the hair. So I'm gonna come up here and take a look at the hair region up in here. It doesn't look too bad, but if you come back before we did all of this, so come back to when you simply opened up the image, you can see that it actually not, it, it removed a lot of the really feathery hair. Again, I've still got spill in this, but I want that spill in it. But when I choked this guy down, what ended up happening was it removed the green from around my entire image, but it also did damage to this hair. It actually cut all this off. Now, because she's against this, these woods right here, you do, it doesn't become quite as obvious. But the truth of the matter is, I wanna bring this back. I didn't wanna choke her hair. I wanted to choke her body, but I didn't wanna choke the hair part. So to get that back, you come up to your history states and you, again, do not select these states. You never actually click on the state itself. You simply click on the little box that's to the left of it and you need to click on the pre-choke box right here. And what that will allow you to do now is paint with your history brush to bring these edges back. So with the history brush selected, so again, it's the one that's right underneath the clone stamp tool, you select the history brush. You need to make sure you change your blending mode back to normal. Remember we were using darken when we were trying to remove the, uh, the, um, the dust and scratches. Make sure that it's 100% normal, 100% flow. You can go ahead and leave the edge of this brush. Mine's a medium softness, it's fine. It'll do exactly what I need it to do. I'm gonna make the brush a little bit larger here. And then again, working on my mask, because this is what we did. We, would, we choked the mask, we didn't do anything to the image itself. Working on the mask, I'm gonna come back over here and I'm simply going to paint back in the spill, or the area, all the really fine hair that's got all the spill that I need to actually remove. And you can see that this is now giving me the best of both worlds. I have now 
flipped the body down here, so I removed that green line, and that green line was around everything. If you, um, uh, actually we can uh, save your file right now. So come up to the file menu and come down to save, or save as. And I'm gonna throw mine in my toss folder. You'll also notice now that you should, if your uh, history options are set up correctly, you've got a timestamp version of your sitting of the file sitting right here. This is also another history state right here. So to see what the difference looks like, you can actually use both of your history states. I'm going to zoom back out a little bit so I can just see. I want to see pretty much a good part of her body just to see what the difference is. Come up here to the very top and click on the choke and spread image when it first opened up. You can see it brings back that entire edge that's around your foul or and then go back to your timestamp version and you can see that the entire thing is gone. It doesn't get any better than this. Just remember this part as well. Let's say for some reason you realize, oh my God, it was too aggressive on this area that's right between her arm. You want to bring some of that choke back underneath her arm. Well, you can do that. You can actually just, again, in your history state, come into the, uh, um, I'm actually going to go down to the very bottom. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom of my history right now and select so that I still have all of my history part down here. So this shows when I actually did my save as. So I've selected this guy again. Um, I am going to go back to, again, if you look at your history, the stamps up here, I've got my uh, uh, the little brush icon that's by the pre-choke state. And again, I've got the history brush selected and I could come back in here and I can paint that back in and this brings the unchoked version of it back. If I don't like that and I wanna change it again, I can actually again go to my post choke state, put my history brush next to the post choke state. I'm gonna zoom in on this so you can see what it is I'm talking about and I can paint that out. So let's say I think it was too aggressive on that little belt handle right there. I'm gonna make my brush smaller and then I'm gonna go back to my pre-choke history state and I'm gonna paint that part of it right back in. You can see I get, the, um, uh, I, I get the green to come back, but I could probably fix that using spill. Are there questions about this? Do you want us to do that in the file itself? Everything that we do from now on is going to involve all the tricks that I'm trying to give you guys. I want you to practice this stuff as much as you possibly can. To, to answer that, I use all of this on everything that I ever work on all the time. But this is the work that I do, so there you go. But again, this is not limited to just doing masking work like this. If for some reason you need your mask to be slightly larger or slightly smaller, it'll do it. Make sense? Are there questions about this? Are we good? Okay, you can close this guy up. We don't need to save that. It's not part of your homework. And go back to the girl. Uh, go back to this girl part right here. Okay, so well, we got this image back. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do with this image, again, I wanna retouch this, but what we're gonna talk about today, and there are PDFs that are on our website that will actually walk you through this process. I'm gonna step you through it right now to show you how to do this. But again, uh, and this is part of your homework, so you definitely wanna save this as we actually start to work on this. But what we're gonna do here is we are going to retouch this image tonally. We are not going to use the conventional retouching tools that you guys use. We're gonna use a little bit, a little bit of some of, the, uh, of them, but the primary method that we are going to use to fix this guy is called tonal retouching. It's very, very, very labor intensive. It's very, it takes an enormous amount of time. I think I've set this up so that this assignment is not due until Friday. It may not even be due until next Monday. We'll, we'll check, we'll see how things are going. Um, um, we'll just see how things are going. Um, so this is how the really, really, really high-end work is done. So if you're retouching for for, for L'Oreal or your Lacombe or any of those people, if you're doing that kind of work, they're beauty work. Now this is probably not really, there are people who would do some of this possibly um, uh, for full length fashion work, 
But like I say, um, the typical person that I know who's actually gotten this thing retouched well has usually spent anywhere from eight to 16 hours working just on this face. It's a lot of time, but I want you guys to learn this part of it. Again, you may never use this again. Personally, I use it on all my high-end beauty stuff. If it's really in tight like this, this is how I do it. So uh, again, I'm not trying to tell you, I'm gonna show you another couple other ways to actually do some retouching today, but I want to show you part this, because this is the part that nobody knows how to do. This is the part that nobody's ever taught. And so I want you guys to know this part and to realize how it works because this is the single least destructive way that you can actually do retouching. And the problem that we have with retouching is this. In a nutshell, if you were to come in, well, we can see this here. Let's actually just try this part right here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this guy and we're gonna take a look at how you guys would typically do this. So I'm gonna take a, make a, just a duplicate of this guy and then I'm not gonna use the healing brush tool. I'm actually gonna use the, uh, um, um, uh, the um, uh, clone stamp tool just so that you can see what the problem is. So with the clone stamp tool selected, it is the S key if you actually wanna pick that guy. Come up to your, um, uh, the hardness of this brush and I need you to make this a perfectly hard brush, a completely 100% hard brush. Make sure your blending mode is normal, that your opacity is 100% and that your flow is 100%. And then I'm gonna make my brush about the size of that pimple. And then I'm gonna come over here to the side to sample a place for uh, for uh, to, to replace so hold down the option key click on this and come back over to this side whatever and click and I don't know about you guys but I can actually still see the circle edge of that right there I can spot it so that's not viable to me so instead what people do if you hit command Z will actually undo that so then what people do is this they say well of course you can see the edge you need to soften the brush up and so I just softened that brush up and then I'm going to repeat the process however now what happens is this you have an overlap of texture on this edge where the brush is soft the center of the brush is completely hard but as you start to move out to that soft edge, that soft edge, the trick of why you, it disappears is that you are adding some new texture, but you're letting some of the old texture come through. You have now laid texture on top of texture, and that's how you fuck skin up. It's no longer real. Now, in a very small case, you do one pimple on one head, what, nobody will ever notice that, but if you do this all over someone's face, you destroy that texture. And so what people do to fix that is they just keep going further and further and further, and you end up with plastic girl on the, uh, every ad that you actually have ever seen in any, you know, you don't go to any, go to Sephora, go to anywhere, whatever, and you just see that it's a whole world of plastic, uh, uh, plastic skin people. That is not what we are going for in this class. If somebody's gonna pop 20 grand on you to actually touch something, whatever, you don't hand them plastic skin. Does that make sense what's going on here? So that's the problem. The issue that we've got with this is that using these tools to make it subtle enough to actually be able to see it, you end up destroying the texture of the skin. And so we are going to say no to that, command Z to undo that. And instead what we're gonna do is we are going to do this tonally. So here's the trick. How many people in this room have ever used a soft light dodge and burn layer? Okay, well, we're gonna look at that right now then. So there's a number of ways of making this. I'm gonna show you the most concise way and I want you to do this with me because it's just the fastest. So to do this, you come over, we're gonna add a new layer, but before you click on that add new layer, hold down your option key and click. And when you do that, it'll open up a dialog box for you. You can do all of these settings one after another um, by just clicking on this and then changing its blending mode. You can do all of that shit. It's just easier to do it in this, uh, 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 to do it in this fashion. So the option key brought up this dialog box. You need to type in tonal retouching, T-O-N-A-L retouch. Large. So tonal retouch large. Then you need to click on the drop down menu for your blending mode and you need to change it to soft light. And then finally you need to click on this checkbox, fill with soft light neutral gray, 50% gray, and say okay. And you'll see what ends up happening. It ends up making this layer for you right here. It's called tonal retouching large. You can see that it's changed the blending mode to soft light. You can also see that this thing is actually filled with a middle gray, but you don't see any change in your image. 
And this is the way a soft light layer works. In a soft light layer, anything that's on the soft light layer that is 50% gray is transparent. Anything that's lighter than 50% gray makes your image appear lighter. Anything that's darker than 50% gray makes your image darker. That's why people use this to do dodging and burning. So if you hit the B key to get a brush, make sure that it is in normal blending mode. Let's go ahead and make it a hard brush just so that you can see the edges of it. It'll be easier. Make sure that it is 100% opacity, 100% flow, and then hit the D key to default your foreground and background colors to black and white. Black is now my foreground color. I'll make my brush a little bit smaller so I can come over here and I'm going to simply click and drag down and you can see that it makes my image darker. And people will actually use this. Uh, uh, they will actually either drop their opacity or drop their flow way down. And you can use this to slowly build in. It's like you're burning in an image. Does that sort of make sense? It makes areas of your image darker. If you hit the X key, and you go to white and you do the very same thing, you will actually see that it makes your image lighter. So people will simply go back and forth between this. They'll actually keep a finger on an X key. They'll go back and forth between these two things and they will actually use these to dodge and burn. Does this make sense to everyone? Are we good on this part? However, there's another catch to this. And the catch to this is it's not only going to make these images darker and lighter, but the color that we use in this, to see the color in this, simply hold down the option key and click on the eyeball and you can see the image by itself. This color that we've actually got in here is also laid down on your image. And so in the case of using pure white and pure black, or even if we were using just shades of gray, darker grays and lighter grays, that kind of stuff, whatever, it has an impact on the color of the image underneath as well. And what happens in this case, if you were to use white and black to do this dodging and burning, what ends up happening is it ends up desaturating the skin that we're actually working on. So this area, it will make things lighter and darker, but it'll also suck some of the color of the skin out of it. And you, the skin will start to look, um, um, well, it starts to look gray. Does that make sense, everyone? So for us, what we need to do is we need to dodge and burn using skin color, not black and white. Does that make sense? So that's what we're going to do. If you've done all of this so far with me, hit hold down command option and hit Z to get rid of both of those colors. You can turn the uh, bottom layer back on in this. So this is how we're going to actually make um, dodging and burning colors. So we're going to start with, I'm simply going to click on the foreground color picker. It doesn't matter which one we start with first. I'm just going to pick on that guy. Now you'll hear a whole lot of people will say you need to look for a highlight on this skin tone to pick a really light color. That's not true. All I need to do, I need to just click anywhere on that's normal skin. You want to avoid places that would have a lot of makeup on it. So you would want to avoid, again, lips. You want to avoid cheeks usually for that part of it. You don't want anything where there's obviously been a color put in. Now, now, in this case, she's got foundation on her face. I'm okay with that part right here. But again, you don't want to, you don't want to click on a place that's got any contouring. You don't want any of that. You want just a general skin color. And you can see here, the only thing that I really care about is this number right here. The hue for this is 23 degrees. I can change everything else. And that's what I'm going to do right now. So to change this, I'm actually going to click on the brightness slider, the brightness um, radio button. And I'm going to drag this guy up and I want to get to somewhere right in the mid 90s. So I'm in a 95% right in here for my brightness. You don't want to go all the way up. It'll actually make things too light. But so now I've got my hue was established by my click. My brightness now has been brought up to um, a, a sort of mid 90s. Again, I'll go anywhere from 93 to 96 or whatever. I, I still don't want to go all the way up. But this is still too saturated. You can tell that that's not that light of a color. It's still really, really super heavy. I need the color to be uh, lighter. And so I'm going to drop its saturation. So again, click on the S button now for saturation and then simply drag this guy down. And I usually drag down somewhere. I keep it in a, a definitely positive. If you drag it all the way down to the bottom, you go back to the exact problem that we were having before. This is no longer a skin color. This is now going to be a shade of gray. And in using it, it will actually make your skin look gray. So I'm looking up at this image right up in here and you don't really pick it up on my screen as much as but if you look guys look at yours it should be uh, you should feel like this is a relatively good light color so I'm uh, I've got a saturation that's around 11 if I feel like it's a little too light but I'm looking at my screen here I don't I feel like that's actually pretty right you just want to make sure you don't go all the way down is this working for everyone so you simply click on the foreground color Does that work yeah. okay so say okay to this. 
this is now going to be our uh, dodging color. This is going to be how we make parts of our image lighter. So then we need to do the darkening color. So if you click on the background color, you also open up the color picker again. We're simply going to do the same thing. I'm going to click right here in the middle. And you see that my angle is, again, remember, angle is hue. That hue is being established by this. It was 23 before. It's 24 now. Those are. There's no way you can tell the difference in those two colors ever. And a human eye can't. However, in this case, I actually want to click on my brightness. And again, I'm going to bring it down. And I bring my brightness down. And I've got it down. It's, I, I'm down roughly around a 19%, 19 and 20. But in this case, because I feel like I actually need more color, this is image is getting really, really, really dark, I am going to pump my saturation up. And this is usually a place where I end up playing. Let me go back to my brightness and knock it down just a little bit more. So if you want the same colors that I've got in here, I've got a hue of 24, a saturation of 41. It usually is in the 40 to 50 range right here. Uh, and then my brightness is in the low teens. And that's usually where it ends up being. Again, this projector doesn't do a very good job of showing it. But you should see something decent on your screen. Is this working for everyone okay say okay to this so now I've got my dodging and burning colors and now I can actually go to work on this image uh, yeah so a couple things that we need to talk about in this class who in this class can tell me the difference in opacity and flow it's these numbers that sit up here all the time what's the difference OK, we use them all the time. Opacity is the easier one, but we want to take a look to see what these things truly are like so you understand how to use them. I'm going to show you how I think you should start working on this, but I'm also going to tell you what you're looking for in the future, where you're ultimately going to try to want to go. Make sense? So here's the deal. New file for me, please. Command N, bring up another synthetic file. Go ahead and say OK. Mine's again 8 by 10 at 300 PPI. I'm going to double click on the hand to get it big. I'm going to hit the B key to get a brush. I'm going to make sure that it is a completely hard brush so that I can see the edges. And then you will also notice with this new game right now, uh, I, what I want to do is I want to use my, uh, um, um, I want to use uh, black and white on this guy. So again, I'm going to, even though I've had those colors up there, I'm going to lose those colors. I just hit the D key. I'm going to make my brush a little bit larger. And I'm simply going to paint a line and go across. And that's what everybody would expect it to be, right? It lays down 100% of the ink because I've got 100% opacity and 100% flow. Is that working for everyone? All right, here's the trick. Change your uh, opacity to 50%. So come back to, or close to 50%. I'm just going to bring it back to 50, almost 50%. And then I'm going to actually, so here's, watch my screen. Don't do this yet. Watch my screen because I need you to, to, to keep this part in mind. If you click and you draw across, you'll see, I haven't let go of my mouse yet, it is laying down a 50% gray, which is half of the black. That's what you would expect. But as I continue to go back and forth across this, it changes only places that I haven't hit before. As I keep going back and forth here, I'm not building up any density at all. It laid down that 50%, and no matter how much I go back and forth across that, it's that 50% period. So go ahead and do that line for me as well. However, now that I've let go of my mouse or taken the stylus up off of your tablet and you do this again, it lays down an additional 50%. Now, there's a lot of people that believe that, oh, well, this should be black just like this guy right here. That's not true. What happens is, is that when I painted the first stroke, it looked at the background, which was white, and it said you want to paint 50% black ink on it, and it laid down a 50% black ink. But now that I'm painting on it, what I'm painting on is already 50% gray. So now what it's doing is it's going halfway between the 50% gray and the black. And you'll notice if you look at the color readouts up here that this has not gone to black. So you didn't add 50% to 50%. So every time you stroke this again, it's going to go halfway between black and whatever numbers up there again. So I'm going to stroke it again. You'll see it'll go into the 30s. So that is still not black yet. This is reading up here close to 30. That's how opacity works. You have to constantly remove your mouse or lift your stylus up and then put it back down again to actually bring it in. Does that make sense, everyone? Okay, you can crank that all the way back up. Crank your opacity all the way back up again. And take your flow. I don't want you to take your flow down to 10%. Flow is a really tricky one. Flow, most people who work with flow, you would be shocked at how low people get this. So a lot of people who work with flow never get above 10% flow. Um, it just depends. You'll see how fast this thing takes off on you. 
So then come down underneath this, and what I want you to do is that same back and forth motion, and you'll actually see that over time this continues to build till you reach, till you finally reach your complete density on this. But again, there's never a point that you have to lift your mouse up or your cursor off or change any of that. Does that make sense to everyone? We good on this part? All right, so you can close this guy up. So in the case of working on this file, what we are going to do, and this is what I suggest all of you do, is this. We're going to start off using opacity, and I would ask you guys to at least get through this assignment using opacity, okay? Once you get really good later on, you can actually go to flow. It becomes, the people who get really good at this and do this a lot, they don't stick with opacity, they move to flow. The problem about flow with us working right now though is that it can take off too quick on you and then you'll just get frustrated. You'll be just going back and forth and back and forth and you don't want to do that. So it, this is sort of like starting with training wheels. Is that okay? All right, so this is how we're gonna do it. Uh, I am going to grab a brush. I'm going to make my brush smaller, about the size of the area where the white is, right on the center of that zit. Um, I've got to make my foreground and background colors again really quickly, So, but I remember what they were. It was a hue of 24. And then again, in my saturation was roughly, I'm making my dark color was roughly in about the 50s. And my, uh, sorry. Now let's just sample it again. Oh, I'm actually yep, working on the right layer. Sorry. Uh, click on the color sampler tool, come up, sample the skin. Again, click on saturation. We'll make the um, um, uh, um, uh, uh, dodging color first. I'm gonna kick my brightness up to the mid 90s, my saturation down to the upper teens and say okay to that. I'm gonna go to my background color right here in my background color, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna sample the color right there. Again, I put in a hue of 26, I'm fine with that. I'm gonna bump the saturation up slightly and then click on the brightness and grab it and bring it considerably down. So I continue to make these color colors over and over and over. However, if you want to save your colors, you can. To save your color, come up to the window menu and come down to swatches. With swatches actually opened up, you'll see a screen that looks like this. Um, there's a drop down menu in your swatches that will allow you to list your swatches in a whole range of different ways. People who really get into these things, most people will use either the small or the large list and the reason they do that is it actually gives you readouts to hear what the colors really are. If you only go to the default, which is the small thumbnail I think, these things don't mean anything, they're just a bunch of colors, but if you use the list they actually tell you what they are. If you scroll down to the very bottom of this list, you can actually come over to your color picker right here and you can say, because this is now my foreground color, you can click on this little uh, icon at the bottom part right here and it opens up a thing and says, do you want to add this to your library? And I'm going to go, yeah, this is my skin eyes uh, dodge. And say, so, okay. And now it'll sit here forevermore, and I, if I need to get it, I can always come back and get it. It'll sit right here. If you hit the X key, you will actually bring up your burning color in here, and again, click on that little icon at the bottom, and I would call this Skin Eyes Burn. And say OK. And then no matter what, if my colors default back to, you know, if I hit the D key to default them back to foreground and background, to bring these colors back, simply click on your color picker and then come over and click on the dodge color and say okay, and then click on your background color and click on the burn color here and say okay, and then close up your swatches palette and you're back to, so you don't have to make them again. Does that make sense to everyone? Are we good on this part? Okay, so let's actually do it. If you come over to your opacity slider, I'm actually going to ask you to take your opacity down to 6%. Now, I do a lot of this kind of work, and this is where I always land, is in this range right down in here. And so here's the trick to doing this. I'm going to start off, I'm going to zoom in one more click like this. I'm going to start off with my dark color, my X key right here. So again, I'm going to check my brush. You need to make sure that your brush is completely soft. Normal blending mode, 6% opacity, and uh, um, uh, 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 sorry, flow should be up at 100%. So again, completely soft brush, normal blending mode, 6% opacity, and a flow of 100%. And then, guys, I am going to go 
since I don't have a tablet, I'm going to go to a mouse. You'll see how tough this is going to be to do if you're using anything but a tablet. So here is the trick. I need everybody to look up at me right here, right now. Imagine that this is my tablet. This is my fake tablet right here. Here's the trick. Everybody's temptation in doing this kind of work is to paint. So I'm looking at the white dot. Let's not talk about the white dot. Let's talk about the area that's around it that's darker. Everybody's temptation is to circle that with a, like a paintbrush. Do not do that ever. That is a stroke that never happens in retouching. It certainly never happens in tonal. What you're always doing is dot, 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 dot. You never stroke, never drop and pull, ever. It's always dots. So if I need to go around this outside like this, it's dot, 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 around like that, whatever. Because that way you don't have a solid stroke edge. If I've got a series of dots, this is what happens. I've got a dot here and a dot next to it and a dot next to it and a dot next to it. All of these little areas in between these where those round edges are like intersecting, this part right in here and in here and in here and in here, all of that is softening up this edge. Whereas if I click and stroke, I've got a, a, a Jesus Christ. I start like this, but then I pull around, I've got like these tubes. Does that sort of make sense what's going on? This is far more subtle. This will never ever work. When we get to the, uh, the lines under her eyes, it gets even worse. So here's the trick. I'm going to come over and I'm going to just start right here in the middle. That's the little dark area right here. Again, you can see that my foreground color is the darker color and I'm simply dotting. I'm simply using my mouse to dot down. Stop before you think you've gone far enough. Hit the X key uh, and then start to work your way around the outside. Again, the X key went to our lighter color. So I'm just hitting the lighter color and you should just be doing dot, 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 dot. Hit the X key to go back to the center. Hit the X key again to go back to the bigger dot, I mean to, uh, to going around, dot, 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 like. So I'm getting a little frustrated with this part, so I'm actually going to bump up my opacity, but don't go up much. I'm going to take it up to like a nine and then start to look at this. So I feel like I'm getting close, but I've got an overall problem. And I, again, I just know this image well enough to know I'm going to have an overall problem. You need to constantly be looking at the blown up view like this. Yes. My brush isn't doing any ink down. It's not doing what? Any ink. Like when I click on the thing. Okay, well this is at a normal blending mode and it needs to be soft light. Right. To begin with. I had changed it back because I couldn't see anything. So just to like double check. Good like that. And then your flow is 100%. Your opacity needs to go down to 6%. You're working on a darker color right here. Hit Command D to make sure you don't have a selection going. Good. And then again, just trying that area right there. Dot, dot, dot. No, you're, yeah. Yes. So it's definitely adding stuff to this outside right here. You can see that's getting darker. Hold down your Option key and click on the eyeball. And you can spot it right there. I so you need to zoom in deeper. That's why we actually put it on gray, okay. so you can see it. Yes. Okay. So that goes right. That goes right. That goes right. Uh, you're doing the lighting color. You need to be doing the darkening color. So hit the X key. Good. And then you're working right in the middle. Zoom in a little bit tighter. Good. And try it now. Just right on the white part. You're making the white part darker. Yeah, and it's totally working. Okay. So I turn this guy on and off. Oh, like that's why. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so, uh, that's okay. That's okay. There's a power strips in the middle. If you can reach. Yeah, that one's played here. Oh, you're back in the wall. Sorry. Uh, okay, is this working? So wait, wait, wait. Hello? Who is this working for and who not? Then did you actually make those? I got it. Got it. Uh, yeah, those colors. Yeah, 
Yeah, so this color, that part's right. Yeah, yeah, this a uh, little uh, feeling of gray in there. Don't worry, we're going to see what's happening. And if you feel that way about it, whatever, you can always change this. So go back to your burning color and open this up. And let's actually, you can leave that part. This part's actually right. Go ahead and boost your, uh, wow, that's really odd. Let's try this again. Click out on the, to the skin itself. No, leave that open. We're just going to rebuild it. Click out on the skin itself. That part's right. And then so again, take your saturation, take your brightness and bring it down. Like a lot. Good, and take your saturation and pump it up. Yeah, yeah, try 50, yeah. That seems like a more, it's got more color in it. I'd pull the brightness down a little bit more. You can come down to like a 20 and try that. All right, so is this working for everybody, sort of? Okay, a couple things I need you to look at here really quickly, and it's this. So one of the issues that we've got with this is that, and again, when you're doing this sort of work, whatever, we are so zoomed in, you can lose track of what's happening to the whole overall image. And it helps if you can actually see a version of your image at a different magnification, and you can do that. Now, we're not going to duplicate this image. If you came up to the image menu and you came down to duplicate, that would not actually help us here at all because duplicate creates a completely separate image. That's not what I want because a separate image will not show me the work that I'm on. What I'm working on one, it's not reflected on the other. What I really need here is another view of this image itself, and it's not duplicate. To get to that other view, come up to the window menu, down to arrange, and you want to come down to new window for skin eyes retouch and when you do that it'll open up another window for you and you can see that this is a really zoomed out version of this I'm actually going to zoom in slightly on this guy just so that I have a little bit better idea of what's going on this seems to be a pretty good view for me you can tell now why retouchers use big monitors because right now is when this is just like it's like I'm, I, I'm in order to be able to see this I'm losing my 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 uh, um, um, uh, channels palette my information I'm losing all that when I drag this thing on the other side here to be able to continue to work you can see that this is a mess if you have a really nice big monitor you can move this stuff out but we don't have a nice big monitor so I'm still going to continue to do this the way that we are I'm just going to make this uh, window a little bit smaller so I can see that that's where the pimple is right there but I can also see it sitting right here actually I got to move that image a little bit because that was sitting right under a piece of dust on my screen. So you can see here and you can tell here that and in yes indeed it's beginning to work. I'm not there yet but if you turn this on and off you can see that I'm indeed beginning to diminish this. But now what's happening is I'm getting to the point where I can see that the entire overall thing is a little bit too dark. Again I'm going to zoom into this other side just a little touch more. I think that'll give me a better idea of what's going on. And now I'm going to continue to work on this image right here. I'm going to go to a little bit larger brush now because I think this is a more overall big. I think I've gotten the two close in tone, but now I need the entire thing needs to be lightened up. I've still got my dodging color is, uh, is actually sitting there. So again, I'm just going to start clicking around this to actually bring that back and that was way too strong. You can see now when I had that, I'm just going back using command shift. Um, when I had this, um, 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 my brush now is set up to 9%. It's just way too strong to go after this guy. So I'm actually going to drop this down to like a three or 4%. And then again, I'm going to go after this guy again. Just dot, 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 dot around this guy and continue around that whole part like that. And again, this is virtually impossible to do with a mouse, but nonetheless, we're getting there. So if you then take a t turn this guy on and off, whatever, you have now removed the pimple and you have not touched the texture of the skin one iota. There is not a single pore here that is out of place. There's not a single anything in here that's been changed. It's just that the pimple is gone. Did it disappear for you guys? Did that part work? Okay, we need to go look at another area of this image really quickly. So I am going to, uh, go back to this zoomed in part. I'm gonna zoom back out for just a second. 
and I want to go up to this area that's right underneath this girl's eye. So I'm going to come up here into this area right in here. And there's a couple of things that we've got going up here that we actually need to address, but it's basically the same thing. So this is especially where people are tempted to actually do click and drag. They're tempted to try to paint these lines in. If you try to paint the line in, it will become obvious a mile away. You will never, never not know that that isn't what you did. You will be able to spot this forever. So you don't want to do that. Again, I'm going to zoom in slightly a little bit more. I'm going to make my brush smaller about the size of this line. I am using my dodging color right here and I'm simply, I'm going to uh, zip this back up to 6%. And then again, I'm just going to start doing dots as I come down here. So I'm just hitting dot, 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 dot. Again, do not try to paint this. Just keep going dots back and forth and you can see Try to do this with a mouse or try to do this with your tablet and you will hate your life. Uh, but this part's actually working really pretty well for me right now. I am definitely bringing my tablet next class. And you keep doing this for a little while and you get frustrated and you say, well, this isn't doing anything. Come over here and just turn the eyeball on and off. And you can see, yes, it is doing quite a bit and it's actually removing the line, again, with no destruction of texture at all. Is this working for you guys? Perfect. You need to, everybody, look up at my screen really quick, because again, we're, we've got a lot to cover today, so I'm gonna try to get to it all. So um, I, I think you guys are getting a good idea of this whole dodging and burning part. There's a little white spot that's sitting right up here. You can see that it's right under her eyelashes. I want you to come in and I want you to burn that guy in. So again, I'm gonna hit the X key to get to my burning tool, and I'm gonna come right around this dot, and I'm just gonna continue to actually hit my dot. Uh, just, um, you know, tapping, 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 tapping and you can see nothing happens. Actually, things get worse. It's not only did I never get that little white thing to go, uh, to go away, whatever, but now I've got a dark circle around it. Does everybody see that part? To see what that dark circle looks like, hold down the Option key and click on the eyeball for your soft light layer, and you'll see this is what you just laid down. This is this darkening, this is this burning color that you actually just put down. That's actually the line that I used. You can see how organic this line is. This doesn't look painted. There's little gaps in it. That's what makes it all believable. This, however, isn't gonna do the trick, and the reason this thing can't do the trick is that that is a pure white down there. It is not, that's a pure white. You're never, ever, ever in a million years gonna burn that down because there's nothing to burn, there's nothing there. But to make things worse, I've now got this red, this circle that's actually around it. The way you go back, because again, I've got, I've clicked so many times in history, I'm well beyond how I can go back in history, I can't do that. Instead, just remember that everything on this image that is a neutral gray, a 50% gray, is transparent. So to get rid of this guy, I'm gonna, everybody do this with me, hold down your Option key and simply click on it, hit the L key to get your lasso tool, and simply circle this thing. Just pull a circle right around it like that. Avoid the work that you did down on the eye. You don't want to touch that part. But this guy right here, you just got it circled like this. Come up to the Edit menu, come down to Fill, and in the drop-down menu, pick 50% gray. Leave it at 100% opacity. Make sure your blending mode is normal, and say OK. That gets rid of that part. I'm going to show it to you what it looks like in looking at the image. So I'm going to hit Command-Z to undo that, and then show you. So I've got that still that, re, uh, that halo, that dark halo that's around it. But again, if I fill, this is, I'm still working on my tonal layer. If I fill this guy, come up here to fill and 50% gray, command D to deselect. And that is actually now gone. Yes. It's not doing what? Just show me again. Oh, no, click on the eyeball. Ooh. Yeah. Hold on the option key and click on the eyeball. Not the icon, the eyeball. Yeah, it's gone. There's nothing in there. Hit Command-D. You don't see anything. Yeah. What was that uh, thing you click when you like are trying to get out of a window, but you don't want to use I just click on the word Adobe. Adobe. Oops, sorry. Okay. 
So I clearly have to go after this in a different fashion. And the way we go after this in a different fashion is going to be, this is one of the cases where we do have to replace the pixels here. There's no other option in doing this. So we are going to use either the healing brush tool or the clone stamp tool. What is the difference in those two tools? Parts of what you're saying are correct on some level, a little ugly, but that's okay. Um, we need to look at what those two tools do and the difference in them. So there's another file that I need you to open really quickly for me, please. <clears throat> It's in week number six. There's a file in here called clonehealing1.psd, if you can open this guy up. Again, if your screen ends up looking like mine, you just wanna hide everything else, so up to the Photoshop menu, down to hide others. And you'll see it's just sitting up on your screen. Now in this case, there is, it's in session number six. Yours isn't in six? It's in seven? Oh, well. What the hell am I in? I thought this was what I'd given you guys. Anyway. Have you guys all found it? All right, we're going to get through this part here really quick. We'll take a 15-minute break and come back and, and head into something completely different. Um, okay, so here's the difference. Here's the difference. Um, this is a synthetic file. It's just a file that I built. Uh, you can see right now we're on layer number two that's not even turned on. You want to make sure you're working on the background layer. So simply click on the background layer to make sure that it is um, the active one. Um, so in this case, what we've got is there is a left half of this is a 50% gray. The right half of this is simply a gradient. And if you hit the S key, which is the clone stamp tool, make sure that your blending mode is normal, 100% opacity, 100% flow. Click on your drop down menu. Let's go ahead and make sure that, let's go ahead and make it a hard brush. It's just easier to see the edges if we do this. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to actually make it a much larger brush like that. And then the way this tool works is I'm going to come up here sort of towards the top in the middle, hold down the option key and click. That sets my source. And then if I come over here to this part of my uh, image over here and click and drag down, you can see there's a little white cross that's actually back in the gradient part that's showing me that the source travels with the destination and it simply replaces, it's a pixel pixel replacement. Did that make sense to everyone? Did that work for everyone? And that's the way everybody learned the clone stamp tool and the way you think it works. If you hit command Z to undo that, I want to show you one other trick, and it's this one right up here. See this thing that says aligned up at the top? If you click, if you uncheck aligned and come back, and we're going to do the exact same thing again. I, I take it back. Leave aligned checked really quick for a second. Let's do that very same thing again. Simply click and drag down, and you get the gradient comes down. Just come up right next to where we were in that, uh, on, in the still in that same gray space, and click and drag down again. And you can see that everything stays aligned. Everything, every time I go back to doing this again, my destination and my brush, those two have been inextricably linked to one another. And so this thing will continue to always be like this, right? If you, I need you to undo all of that. To undo all of that, command option, hit Z, Z, Z to undo all of that. Now I need you to uncheck that align checkbox and then do the exact same thing. Start in the middle at the top, click and drag all the way down. And it looks like things are happening exactly the way you thought they would. But now this time, instead of starting back up here next to where it was, come down here in the middle of your image and click and start down. And you can see what happens here is that when you uh, disable that alignment, that the wherever got sampled becomes the source of wherever you click. So no matter where I click, it's always going to start back up at this part up in here. Does that sort of make sense, everyone? So that's the uh, clone stamp tool, command option Z and Z again. We're now gonna go to the healing brush tool. It's the J key. If you hit the J key, there is a drop down menu and on this drop down menu, we have options here. So I'm clicking on the little drop down in the corner. We have the spot healing brush tool. And the thing about the spot healing brush tool is uh, um, what ends up happening here is, is that Photoshop picks the source 
for you. So all you do is you paint on the destination. That's all you do. Photoshop is supposed to do the rest. And when it works well, it works really well. The next tool down in that very same grouping down in here is the healing brush tool. In the healing brush tool, what happens is that you, the user, pick the source point and it works just like this, uh, the clone stamp tool did. You'll hover over an area, you'll hold down um, uh, um, uh, uh, the uh, option key, click to set your source point, come over to your, um, uh, uh, your target point and play that whole thing out. Um, I am going to hold off on the patch tool here for just a second. We're going to look at that in a little more detail in just a second. But so here, I'm going to actually ask you to do the healing brush tool, not the spot healing brush tool, but the healing brush tool. Go ahead and make your brush a little bit larger. Click your drop down menu. Make sure that your hardness is completely hard, 100% hard, because that way we can see it a little bit easier. Make sure that your blending mode is normal. Come over to the top of the gradient here, just like we did before. Hold down the option key and click. Come over here and click and drag down and nothing happens. Why? Or did something happen? Something actually did happen. So here's the difference. The clone stamp tool is a direct replacement. It is pixel for pixel. We started, we sampled pixels in the gradient, brought them over here and it painted them in the gradient and that's fine. And that tool works great to do just that kind of work. But what happens with the healing brush tool is this, it is a two step process. So in the healing brush tool, what happens is it samples the texture here it then replaces this with the sample texture. It then looks at the area around the new texture and blends in the color that is around this. So this is actually replacing the textures are the same. This is a synthetic file. There's no, there's nothing, there's no tooth to this. There's no noise in it. There's nothing. It's replacing the texture, which is fine. However, then once, so once you go down and let go, the area that's around it, it is blending that new texture with what surrounds it and what is surrounding it is this 50% gray. So it doesn't look like anything is happening, but that's not true. Things are happening. It just doesn't look like anything. Does that make sense? So again, the trick to the healing brush tool is it replaces texture and then it blends in the surrounding area. It looks at the surrounding color and it tries to make that texture, the new texture, match the surrounding area. Are we good on that part? So that's what we are going to use when we come over here to our image. You can close this guy up. You don't need to save it. So what I care about this image right here is this. For this little white dot that's sitting right here, I could use the clone stamp tool, but the problem in using the clone stamp tool is that again, it's a direct pixel for pixel replacement. I don't really want to do that. What I want to do is actually replace this and I want to blend it into the, um, the surrounding tone, the color of the surrounding tone about this part. However, remember the very first thing that I showed you when we were actually using the clone stamp tool on the pimple on that girl's chin is that it doesn't just fix the problem, it also actually fixed it, it also changed the area that was around this. That's not what I wanna do on this guy. For this guy, I wanna restrict this to the absolute least amount of change that I can possibly do to actually fix just this pixel. So to do that, it is going to be the clone stamp, I'm sorry, the healing brush tool. So again, in this drop down menu here, I am gonna do healing brush tool, but I'm gonna come over here I'm going to make this a relatively soft brush, so I'm going to take my hardness and I'm going to throw it somewhere in the middle, even though I know that that's going to cause a skin texture problem. But what I'm counting on that is actually going to restrict where this thing lands is something that we've already used today, and it is blending modes in this. So just like we were using for removing dust, I'm going to use a blending mode to restrict this. So in this case, I need to come down to my background copy, I'm gonna double click on that name and I'm going to rename this pixel retouching. And say okay to that. Then I'm gonna come over to this spot right here and again, I would sample where this is gonna go but you need to change the blending mode of this first from normal down to darken. Because what's going to happen is, is that I'm gonna sample something that's out here. The, 
uh, the, the area of pixels that's around this white dot are already this color, so they will not change because I said, I only want to make things darker. These are gonna be the same color. So the only thing it's going to change is that little white dot but it will then take the color around that little white dot and blend it in. So again, I'm gonna sample right outside here, hold down the option key, click and sample, come across this guy and click once and it is gone. And you are going to have to do this. There are several spots in this that you're gonna to have to do this with. I'm zooming back out. You can see that there's areas on her face down in here. There's a lot of them that are actually down here. There's one right here, there's one up here, there's one down here, there's one, they're kind of like all over the place. This thing has actually been unchecked. I do not have alignment checked again. So you will see as I actually come down to here, I'm going to come down here again. I sampled the point that's up here just to get the texture. So again, hold down the command option key, click up here to sample texture. I'm going to come over this area again. Darkening is my uh, blending mode on this. I'm going to click and you can see that the original X is still sitting up here on this skin texture, which is exactly what I want. I don't want to have to continue to resample every spot because as I come down here, that's not what I'm looking to do. I, again, I don't worry about the color that's up here. It's not taking the color from up here. It's only taking the texture and this is smooth skin up here. So I can go and hit all of these other dots. It's always going back to that original part. Look, you'll see the little X keeps happening up here. And I'm going to hit these other ones that I can't get any other way. So I'm just tapping on these guys. And it's actually doing exactly what I need it to do. Now there is a lot of white that's down in this image that I don't want you guys treating this way. But these things are the only way because again, they don't have any um, there's no, they're, they're white, they're pure white, they're, so they're, there's no way you're going to get any tone out of the rest of this part. So again, I'm just hitting these last few right down here, but you guys get where this is all going, right? Make sense? Okay, there are areas, and this is the time, this is the thing that takes the most time. We're going to look at two minutes of this, guys, and then we'll take a break. Come in. I need everybody to come into this area of her skin that's right in here. This is the area that, again, this is what retouchers spend their time doing mostly and what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back up to my tonal retouching large right here. Actually, that's a misnamer. That was named wrong. It should be tonal retouch small. Sorry, we'll get to large later. So I'm going to go back again to my B key to get the brush. I'm going to make sure that my opacity is around 6 or 7 percent. I'm going to drop mine down to 6 percent right here. And this is how I typically work. I'm going to actually start, I, I typically like to start with lightening first. So that's where I'm going to go. I've got a brush that's about the size of what's going on in here. And this is basically, I keep one hand on my X key and I just start tap, 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 tap. When I get really bored, I hit the X key, which will give me my burn color. And I come into the middle and I actually burn in here. Hit the tab key again, I mean the X key again to go back. And I'm constantly going back and forth and you need to constantly move. Do not stay in one place too long. It'll actually end up being way too obvious. So again, I'm tapping on here. I'm actually bringing this part out. Hit the X key. I'm going to bring the center in here just a little bit. Keep moving around. X key again. Go back to actually dodging and uh, uh, dodging part out. X key again to go back into burning. And you can see right now, it doesn't look like you've changed anything, but when you start to turn this guy on and off, you can see that it's changed quite a bit. If you hold down the option key and click on that eyeball, you can see this is the work that you're beginning to lay down. And this is how people tonal retouch. Okay, so I know that you're thinking right now, there's no way. I need to show you something. And we'll take a break. I take it back. We'll take a break right now, and I'll find it uh, during the break, and we'll come back. Um, so I've got two thirty now. If you guys got to be like a quarter of three, that'd be great. Should we save this? Yes, it's your homework. Okay. 